When I talked about the history of modern psychology, I mentioned how there are some perspectives in psychology that are historical. I talked about these perspectives in the video I did on structuralism and functionalism. There are also perspectives in psychology that are very much so present today and really form the foundation of the modern science. Well, there's one perspective that falls into the gap between the historical and the modern. The psychoanalytical theory is the focus of this video, and it is probably one of my favorite perspectives. The psychoanalytical theory started to take shape in the early 20th century and largely replaced structuralism. If you remember, I mentioned in the video on structuralism that it was founded in Germany and many of its adherents were Europeans. It also focused more on the internal aspects of our psychology. This was the setting where the psychoanalytical theory was created. Perhaps the one person that is most associated with the psychoanalytical theory was a man named Sigmund Freud. In fact, he is, in my opinion, probably one of the most influential psychologists ever, even up to the present day. That's saying a lot, too, because he died over 80 years ago. Freud also had a pretty interesting life. There's actually a series about him on Netflix that you can check out. It's just called Freud. The focus of the psychoanalytical theory and Freud's beliefs were on the internal aspects of a person's psychology. It especially focuses on the idea that you have a conscious mind and an unconscious mind. Basically, that there are things that you are aware of and can describe, then there are those things in your unconscious mind that you're not really aware of. Even though you aren't aware of them, it still can influence your thoughts and behaviors. The psychoanalytical theory also holds strongly that early childhood experiences are key to a person's psychological development. Freud thought that there were events that happened in childhood that could cause guilt, shame, or tension that set the stage for problems later in life. Some of these events were routine and universal, like the relationship you have with your parents or even learning to use the restroom. Some of these events were a little bit more traumatic though. One of the things I give Freud the most credit for is that he talked about topics like childhood sexual abuse and other forms of sexual violence and how damaging they can be to somebody psychologically. That topic is still taboo today, and yet he was talking openly about it all the way back well over 100 years ago. Freud believed all of these events could be locked into a person's unconscious. Because of this, a really big part of the psychoanalytical theory was based on looking at past causes of a person's present problems. If you have problems with anxiety or depression, a psychoanalytical psychologist would want to look at what happened in your childhood that caused these things to come about. The psychoanalytical theory is also the first perspective that was really comprehensive in its outlook. What I mean is that it covered really everything that is psychological. It covers how your psychological development occurred, how psychological disorders can develop, how they can be treated, and a whole host of other things that structuralism and functionalism really didn't even talk about. Much of the psychoanalytical theory is still a part of psychology to this day. Many psychologists and people in general still talk in terms of unconscious versus conscious thoughts. The form of therapy that was used in the psychoanalytical theory, called psychoanalysis, is still used as a therapy in psychology today. Psychoanalysis allows a patient to talk openly and freely about themselves and their experiences with the hope that perhaps this will bring about a moment of self-realization that can help unlock some of those inner unconscious thoughts. We'll be talking about the psychoanalytical theory and Freud's contributions in other videos later in a variety of different topics, ranging from psychological development to personality and therapies. However, I do need to point out that not everything Freud came up with is a part of modern day psychology. For starters, Freud had a tendency towards sexism. He believed that women were born with an inherent jealousy of men. He actually called this penis envy if you can believe it. He also really overemphasized sexual urges as being a driving force of psychological development. The modern psychoanalytical theory moved away from these beliefs a very long time ago. One of the biggest problems though with the early psychoanalytical theory that in some ways still lingers to this day is that much of the theories it developed were really based more on beliefs or opinions 
rather than being solidly based on science. The difference between the unconscious and conscious minds is a great example of this. How could you develop an experiment or a study to show that the unconscious exists? It'd be really difficult. In fact, a lot of psychologists today even try not to use these terms. Even those that do use them, use them in a different context. For example, they may talk about an unconscious action more as being one that is automatic and doesn't involve a lot of thought. The psychoanalytical theory was hugely influential in psychology for much of the early 20th century. By the mid 20th century, it started to be replaced by the cognitive perspective of psychology. But as I mentioned, it is still very much so a part of the modern science of psychology. Thanks everybody for watching.